Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today, a really cool tutorial, we will see how to create this kind of clothes effect. For that, we will first see how to create a nice cloud and export it in OpenVDB file. And then re-import it with a very volume grade modifier. We will then see how to duplicate them, arrange and give them different opacity and colors. If you are already on my Patreon, I offer you three different clothes. You can then, if you want, go directly to the part on the very volume grade or follow the whole tutorial to also learn how to make your own clothes. In any case, the tutorial starts now. Okay, so the first thing to do is to check that the unit setup is good for cloud simulation. So I select meter by meter. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is to create a shape. Here I will use a simple torus knot. I just adjust the radius. And I will now create a phoenix grid for the smoke simulation. Grid here, 50, 50, 50. And I adjust the position of my grid. Okay. I increase a little the resolution. In dynamic here, I touch nothing. I just change the conservation to PCG. And I up the quality to have a good smoke conservation. I can just up a little the amount for the randomize, and it's good for the moment. I go to the output tab and I select a path for my smoke simulation. You can, if you want, select VDB for the type, but it's not necessary right now because we will do it later for the re simulation. I activate wavelet and velocity. And in preview to finish, I can just enable the GPU preview. Okay, now I'm going to create a Phoenix source. Add my shape. Maybe a noise to three. A little more smoke. And 100 for the smoke velocity. Let's see now how it looks. Okay, so we have a problem here. It's because I forgot to activate the adaptive grid. So I select smoke. I can now relaunch and we see that we have an interesting smoke, but the look is too round, uniform. So to break that look, I will go in the material editor. Just create a standard material and link a noise map to the diffuse. Here. I apply now the texture to the mesh and I will add a UVW map to adjust the mapping. Spherical mapping. I can now play with the high and low value to have a black and white texture. Go to fractal mode and increase the size. Maybe like this. And to finish, we will animate this texture. So phase 0 0.1 for the first frame and maybe 10 for the end. OK, I think it's good like this. Now what I'm going to do is to link this map in the Phoenix Source map slot. Perfect. We can simply hide the torus just by going to Object Properties and Display as Box. Great. Now I can go back to the source and animate the outgoing velocity with a high value like maybe more than 200 to 0 in maybe 10 frames. Decrease the noise a bit, I think. And relaunch. OK, I think it's already better. It's already more interesting for low resolution simulation. We see a lot of variation in the smoke, but I think we can improve again the look of the world smoke. We can decrease the classic vorticity to break that large scale look. Maybe a value of 0 0.15. Decrease the random noise a bit. Increase the grid resolution to have better smoke voxel. 0.5. Mm, 
0.4. Let's try like this. Or oh, I think I forgot some step. Maybe up a little the smoke dissipation to have more light smoke at the end of the animation. We can also add a very little turbulence to create more dumbness again. Maybe string to 5 and size to 50. Now I can relaunch the simulation. And it's really starts to create a beautiful and puffy smoke. I like the result like this. But for the final touch, I really want more random explosion at the birth of the smoke. So I will go back to the material editor and just increase the size of the noise mask. Decrease a little again the noise to avoid small group of smoke. And I think we can relaunch now for our final simulation. And yeah, it's a really cool simulation like this, with a lot of variation in the smoke. I like the result. Now I can stop the simulation. If you want less small parts, you can just decrease again the noise, but for this example, it will be good for me. What I want to do now is to keep this exact look, but maybe with more detail and subdivision in the smoke. If you don't want to do a re-simulation, don't forget to select VDB type in the output path before launch the sim because we will import later this simulation with the volume grid and for that we need the VDB data. Ok, so now I go to frame 0 and I open the re-simulation tab. And for the output here, re-sim, and I don't forget to select open VDB and save. Now I will just enable the grid re-simulation. And my simulation is already good, so I will not set a really high value. I think 0 0.25 can be really good. I don't need a wavelet strength because I don't want so much data inside. And it's good, I think, with all these settings. I can just launch the re simulation. And I can stop here for this example. It's over for this part. We will now work on another Julius Maxine. Ok, so now in the new scene, what I'm going to do is to go to V-Ray and select V-Ray Volume Grid here. I just have to click now in the viewport and select the VDB file we exported previously. Just select No Reset and we see here the first frame of the smoke. It will automatically import all the sequence. If you have trouble to navigate in your scene, you can just up the detail reduction and I will now activate GP Preview. Okay, we see here more frame. What we want is just to select one specific frame, so I will move to input tab and change the mode to cache index. And now I can set the frame I want, maybe 21. Good. And if I go forward in the timeline, you can see that I have still the same frame and not an animation of the smoke. I just add another V-Ray camera from my render, maybe like this. And now what you can do is just duplicate this very volume grid in instance, which means that any change you make to one will be applied to the second. I cannot just rotate the second smoke and place it where I want. Yeah, maybe here like this. And if I change the cache index of one smoke, you see that change on the second smoke too. It's really cool if you don't want to redo each action by hand. Of course, you can also just duplicate the smoke as copy, and this one will be completely independent of the other. Ok, so now I can just add a simple sunlight to see how it looks. Move a bit my sun, maybe here. To navigate more easily, I will just, as I said previously, just decrease the detail of the preview. And for my render setting, I will select Vera GPU. Go to setting tab and select full light evaluation. I can now just launch a test render. And it's really good for a first look. 
I can of course select a better camera angle, set a better final resolution, here HDTV. And what is great now is I can totally change the look of my clouds. For this, I just have to go in volumetric option and I can change the opacity here, maybe 0 0.1. Change the final color, maybe a clear white. And if I relaunch render, we can see that it totally changed the look of that two cloud in instance. We have on one side two light and white clouds, and on the other side a denser and darker cloud. It's a cool way to make different opacity and color. If you want to add more shadow in the light cloud, you can just play with the external scatter setting maybe 0 0.5 and you see here that you have more shadow in light clothes it's really cool it's a great way if i want to keep high contrast inside my light clothes okay now you have all the key to create this kind of cool effect all you have to do is to set up your camera duplicate rotate and index your clothes modify the opacity and the color of your smoke and then just launch a render and for those who want to go further, I will add on Patreon a bonus tutorial how to animate a camera along the spline, add camera shake, perfecting your light and some cool post prod after effect tips. Okay, now it's over for the tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget to thumb up and subscribe if you like my work. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram and support me on Patreon. See you soon for our next tutorial, guys. Bye.